Hello, lovely people of YouTube. So we're back with uh, the Woove Box, the tiny little Groove Box thing. Um, I've already done one video on this, which was a bit of a, an overview and my kind of initial reaction to it. So this is going to be a series of videos just basically going through the whole thing, what all the parameters are, um, and the amount of stuff that this incredible little box does. As much as anything, I'm doing this for me, so I've gone through the whole thing. Um, and I know how to use the thing um, completely in its entirety because there is so much stuff in here in such a tiny box. It's incredible, really. So this one's all going to be about um, the sequencer. So let's turn this bad boy on. We get a nice little smiley face. It says warning loud because I've got it turned up so we can um, hear it, hopefully, um, for this video. Um, usual things. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing, liking and all that kind of thing. And if you also want to support the channel, you can do so via Patreon. Uh, there is a link to that in the description below. Um, a massive shout out to everyone who is um, supporting me on there and continues to support me on there. And you will get some free stuff for doing that. So thank you very much in advance for that. Okay, so when we first uh, turn this on, it goes into song mode. I will start with a, um, a completely blank song. Have I got a blank one? There we go, empty song. Okay, so we've got nothing in here at the moment. So to go over to the sequencer page, what we're going to do is hold the value knob and let's start with the kick. Okay, we'll put a, a basic kind of kick pattern in. So these are my different kick sounds I've got in here at different pitches. Um, the patch page I'm going to cover in more detail in another um, in a separate video, but um, let's just get a more in your face. That'll do. Okay. I remember if you just press on there, it will take you back to the sequencer page, and if you press there, it will take you back to the page that you're on previously, which is quite a useful little shortcut. Okay, so here we are on the sequencer page. We've got nothing on here. I was going to put a basic four to the floor pattern on here. So we're going to hold right, and we're going to just light these up. Okay, and we've got a four to the floor pattern, which I think is very quiet. Let's turn that up a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now, in terms of sort of setting your global um, settings, tempo, etc., you would need to do that first of all in song mode. Um, so BPM, we've got 125. Let's just turn up to 128. I don't know why. And the key and so on. So I'm going to just leave it in C major, but you can choose all your different root notes and all that kind of nonsense there. So from there to get back to where we're on the kick, we're just going to hold that and press that. So we've got our kick in, in there. So on any of these um things we've got various different um options that we can scroll through by pressing so if you're holding that down until it flashes so this first note it'll tell me what note it is and if you press on here we've got velocity uh we've got the step length which is more uh, appropriate for melodic kind of sounds uh we've got shift I'll go through all these separately in a minute. And then you've got the conditional things um, and so on. So let's go with, so you can see all these, um, if I hold them down, they're all going to be A5 on the note because I put the same note in. Velocity is obviously straightforward enough if you want some to be a little bit higher than others. So let's, let's say I put like uh, 1 and 3 up at 127. And we'll turn these 2 and 4 down a bit so you can kind of hear it. So great for doing like accents and ghost notes and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you can hear the two and four is a little bit quieter. Um, so let's go back to this first note. Uh, step length, I'll, I'll deal with that in another one when we do a, um, a melodic part. But you can have it being longer, which will make sense with a different sign as I said before. So shift will kind of just move it slightly out of time so you can go negative value or so if you see if I go negative you can see that note is now kind of actually going to play right at the end of here rather than the beginning okay so it's hardly sort of noticeable but I'll put it on there now until you mop it if I okay so you can hear that it's now kind of coming in a little bit earlier um, or we could go the other way. So if I go back, and then we could shift it a little bit later, so it's a little bit behind the beat. 
Okay, so it's nice for if you want to. I mean, you can do a global swing kind of thing anyway, but you could just do a per track swing thing on that. And if you want to give something a little bit more of a human feel, just sort of shifting them around a little bit, you've got the option of doing that with shift. Okay, so then we have the um, sort of the conditional play thing. So at the moment, it is playing always. We could have it play the first out of two. So if we just put it on that one, it will play on the first time through, just this one note. And then it won't play on the second one. And then it'll play on the first one. So it'll kind of miss them out. So you can have that of like the first of two, the first of three, the first of four, five, and then eight, and then the first of 16. Um, this one will play it like on the, the second time through. Okay, so in fact, what I'll do with these is it's going to make more sense if we do that always. Let's just go on to the snare. That'll do. I'm going to put a snare on beat two and beat four. Okay, so let's say we want the snare drum to do a little drum fill every fourth bar. Okay, so just like a little foriander at the end there. So these three notes here, what I would need to do is change these. because the moment we're playing on always. And we're gonna do it on the fourth time through. Okay, so we've got to do all of these individually. Okay, so now, second time through, third time through, and on this one, Okay, we get that fill. So even though you've only got like a one bar pattern, you can almost get like a four bar repeating pattern by using these, um, conditional triggering effect things um, and there are loads of these on these these are obviously all in the manual I won't go through all of them but you can do it on the, the fifth or then you you can do it on the first and the third the first and the fourth the first and the fifth and so on and then you've got a probability you've got 25% 50% or 75% so let's put a few more snare drums in and let's put these at probability Oop, gone too far off we'll go 50%, let's do them all at 50%. Let's do these three. Because we can use these to show you something else in a second. 50%. Okay, so they are going to play sometimes. And not other times. Okay, so straight away you can kind of see you can get a very nice sort of genitor generative patch going that's going to be slightly different every time it plays now you can um select ones um multiple things start again <laughs> you can select multiple steps so rather than doing all those individually if you hold down right and you do a long press until it flashes okay and then we can select various different ones so i can now change all of those if i wanted to 25 percent or 50 percent or 75 okay or any of the other parameters so it's a much quicker way of doing it than doing it one at a time which is the way i did it previously um and also if you've got loads let's say we've got like a whole pattern like this um of 60 of snare drum i mean again just by doing that obviously you get nice different random fills going but let's say i couldn't remember which ones i put on the whatever the probability so in the context menu which is if you hold right and press down here i'll cover these other bits in a second but we've got select the same okay so now it's selecting all the ones that are the same um kind of settings so it's kind of based on the last one that you did so if i go to let's say um yeah which one did i do always so if i go on probability of 50 percent and then go select same it will show me it will flash on all the ones that have a probability of 50 percent okay which is very useful i think um just so you know which ones are which and that will work with anything whether it's the same note uh, the same velocity any of those settings on here um so let's see if i went back to velocity of 100 and then long press on the press on that and select the same it will show me all of the notes that are at a velocity of 100 which in this instance is all of them so very useful 
from that point of view um, in terms of kind of speeding up your workflow and edits and so on. Okay, let's just get rid of some of these snares. I'll leave that little drum fill in there and let's go to the bass part. Let's find a nicer sounding patch. That'll do for now. Okay, let's just put a random bass line in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not bad actually. So you have the same, obviously, same things on here. I'll tell you what note it is. And you can then, if I want to change that at the moment, it's a B. Now at the moment, it's as you can hear, it's kind of keeping it on the same note. That is because um, it's following the, the chord pattern which if you want to get rid of that, you need to go to global. And it's not that one, it's this one. At the moment it's following the root of the chord. So if I turn that off to none and then go back. Yeah, sorry, you're on pattern, on solo that. Okay, then it can have the whole, the whole range of the notes. So if let's say I want to change that to that note. So I can just hold on the note. Change it like that. Okay, uh, if I go to the lead part, we can have a look at um, step length again. Let's put a different patch in on the lead. Okay, so that's going to be, a, sorry, that's rather loud. That's going to be a sustained note. So if I just put like a short note, one on there, I'm going to just turn the um, release down on that but sustain okay yep okay so you can hear that's just doing playing on one step now so if we make that longer turn that for a second so at the moment it's just playing for one step. If I want it to last for like a whole beat, like a quarter note, that would be four steps. Okay, so we've now got a longer note. So that's what the step section is for. So let's make it last eight, so it'll last two beats, so basically a half note. Okay. Um, and then on all these other tracks, you have the same things. You've got the shift, and then you've got the other um, things. Now, we've not looked at play, so let's go back. To, in fact, I'm going to get rid of that note off there, because that's going to get rather annoying rather quickly. Okay, so I've just amended the, the bass sound slightly just to demonstrate the, the slide um, function on, the, on here. Now, this is different. You, you can do um, portamento and legato things uh, for, like, 303 slides on a different thing. I'm going to cover that in a sound design um, thingy. So let's just get this back to playing as normal. Okay, so. So we're going to make this one slide. So at the moment it's just on play if we do a slide. So hopefully you can hear that kind of doing that slide down. So we could go back and just make that do that like every other one. Okay, so then we have the one with the slide with the dot next to it. So that basically means if that condition isn't met, that note won't play. Okay, so if you hear it now, it'll miss that note out when it doesn't slide. Okay, so again, nice way of just kind of getting a little bit of variety in your um, in your patterns. We've got accent. Let's just go back to um, doing it every time, just so you can hear it. Oh, no, wrong thing, sorry. Okay, we can have an accent and a slide. Which is there. And there's loads of others, um, which are all in the manual. You can read through all these. Can, um, so that is, is basically kind of covering most of the basics on the sequencer thing with all the tracks apart from the chord track. 
Um, if we just go into the context menu on here, so if you want to copy the pattern, you would kind of expect that to be in the the, uh, the pattern menu because at the moment we're on pattern one, which is what that means there. If I go to pattern two, you see there's nothing on there. Um, so if I wanted to put this base onto pattern two, we've got various different things here. Select the same we've looked at. So we can do copy pattern, we've got paste pattern, we can initialize the pattern, and we can do a random pattern. Let's try a random pattern, let's see what happens. Okay, ish. Um, so let's say I want to copy that, so I'd long press on there, copy it. So just to action those, you're going to hold the um, the right button, go through these and then do a long press on there, and then I could go to pattern, oops, I can then go to pattern two just by holding play and pressing pattern two, and then I can go to paste pattern, and it is now on there on uh, pattern two. So I've got nothing else on there, it's just the base on there. Um, I think one thing it does limit in a little bit is the undo function because uh, you can only undo one step um, backwards. So I think that's something that could be hopefully um, improved a little bit more in a, a future firmware up update. Um, okay, let's go back to pattern one, just so we've got... Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the global page here. I'm going to make this follow the root note now of the chord. So at the moment, that's only going to be in a playing all C's because we are in the key of C. So let's go over to the chord. Oh, doing the wrong thing. Um, okay, it's quite a nice sound. Let's just turn that down a little bit in the global. Okay, so... We've got all the the um, the chords. You've got two different like banks of chords, and you can change which type of chord you're playing by number four or um, number twelve button. So at the moment, it's set to diatonic chords in the scale of C major. So you can go through like there's so many different. You can have just all major chords or minor chords. And then there's loads. There's sus2 chords, sus4 chords, augmented, diminished, seven chords, and all that kind of um, stuff. Again, these are all listed in the manual. Annoyingly, it plays every chord when you scroll through. But I generally will leave it in diatonic, but you can have like two different chord um, types in here. So down here, we could have like all the minor chords. And here, the... The chords that are in the scale of C major without getting too involved in um, music theory, but that's quite useful. Um, if you want to, um, this is a bit of an awkward one, if you want to go down an octave you're going to hold play and right and then turn this and then now. Okay, so you can change the playing octave like that. Oh, you've got to watch your note record, you've got to press play first and then that. let's bring it back up to one octave. Okay, there's a ridiculous amount of release on that. Let me just... Uh, change that to there. Okay, so let's say we're going to start with the C. So we'll do a... Um, we'll do the classic chord progression that's in every song ever, um, which is 1, 5, 6, 4. So these are your chords. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, if we're going to start with the one chord, that's in C major, it's there. I'm going to press that, light that up, that's going to play the C chord. The five chord is the G, so I'm going to press that to kind of select that note. Put that there. There's the six chord. And then the four chord. And then what will happen is now the bass line and any other melodic parts will follow that chord progression. Okay, which is really, really cool. I think um, in terms of getting chord progressions going on quickly on here, it, it's so good on this. Um, so you have the same things as you did with all the others. You've got your velocity, length, shift, and then the, the doing the play things. And you can also change the chords here if I wanted to change that from a major to a minor. And so on. You've got lots of options on those chords as well. 
because um, you can change it to all the suspended, aug aug augmented, diminished, major seventh, minor seventh, and all of that nonsense. Let's go back to major. Okay. Um, and then let's go back through again. So you got the the. Um, the chord that you type of playing there, and you can also then do inversions. So that's inversion, basically the uh, the root inversion. First inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and then you can like change the root note, just like random or auto. So a lot of this is just a little bit of trial and error of time, so just seeing what you can come up with. I mean, a lot of this, if you don't know much about music theory, you're not going to know what I'm talking about with chord inversions and all that nonsense. But um, a lot of the times it's just a case, well, if you don't, you don't necessarily need to note with this, just go through these different options and try some stuff out and, um, and see what sounds good at the end of the day. You don't need to know all the music theory nonsense. If you do a long press, it will tell you the note. So at the moment I'm on C major. So let's say I want to take that down an octave. I can just check, choose that and take that one down an octave. Or let's say, let's take that one back where it was. Let's take the G down. And the A down an octave. Okay, so you can hear whatever you do, the bass part is going to follow it. So that's the main difference between the chord tracks and the other tracks, is that you have these extra options to choose your different chords, basically. So you've got literally every chord at your fingertips you could ever wish for. There is one thing just to watch out for. If I go back into song mode, and if we put it into, I don't know, let's go root of A. I don't know why. Uh, because, why not? Um, and then we go back to... Uh, the sequence. Okay, it's going to straight away, it will transpose it. Okay. But, let me just turn this down a little bit. What you've got to remember is, it doesn't change it on here. Let's just get rid of these. In other words, I'm, what I mean is, this is still always the C chord. Okay, so these are the key, the, the notes that are in, um, A major. Okay, so if we go back to our song mode, okay, you can see we're at a root note and we're in A. Let's go A minor. So you've got natural minor and harmonic minor and various other different, um, you know, Phrygian and Dorian and all that um, stuff with different scales. I'm going to cover this again in later videos. Uh, but yeah, if we go to A minor, we'll go back to our chord track. So this is still the C. Okay, it's a C major. So if you're going to think about doing a chord progression of, let's say, the 1564 again, this is now your one chord, not this one down here. Okay, so let's choose that. We'll put there. And then what you're going to remember is it's going to go 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be your 5 chord. That's going to be your 6 chord. And that's going to be your 4 chord. Okay, so you've got to always count. This doesn't change. So let's say you were in, uh, so it's always C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so if you're in uh, G, you would start here. That would be your, your one chord, two, three, and then it goes along here, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've now got it. Same chord progression, but now in A minor. So that's something that confused me a little bit, that it was like, hang on, I'm changing key. You'd have thought this bottom one would then change to the A, but it doesn't. Just watch out for that. So I think that's covered everything I wanted to cover on the sequencer um, side of it. As you can see, there is just on that sequencer page, there is a hell of a lot. Um, I should turn that down. There is a hell of a lot going off um, in terms of like random generating patterns and different chords and all of that kind of stuff. So it's... Um, yeah, I think the, I, the thing I find with the Woof Box is you've just got to sit and play with it and put the time into it to get the best out of it. Because I didn't realise until I really got into it that there was so much just on the sequencer page. I mean, we've not even looked at, 
you know, the patterns and songs and global and sound design and, and all of that. So it's a very, very powerful sequencer for such a tiny little box. So hopefully that was of some help to hopefully one or two people out there. Uh, like I say, if you do like what I do, please like, subscribe and all the other um, stuff. Support me on Patreon if you wish. And the next one in the video series, I will do the pattern page next. I think some of the others won't be quite as long as this one. There is quite a lot to cover uh, on this one. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.